Hey, Kathy, this is Brianne. I forgot to tell you earlier that Tiana's not going to be able to make it this afternoon. I don't know if you heard me. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Um, but that's okay. Um, I'm got to talk to her anyway about some stuff that she's willing to work on. So, but darn it. Um, I always appreciate her input, but that's okay. Um, she can look at this on YouTube if she would like. I am just thank you for resending that stuff. Now I got all six. I just, I don't know why I couldn't see them or I didn't get them before, but I just got the financials. I'm happy that it worked this time. I, yeah, I really did check it several times before I sent it because no. I knew that there was a lot of attachments, but apparently. <laughs> yeah, I'll forward you what I got, but um, just so you can see, but no, I'm sure you did. It's, you know, I, I've been having Google issues or Gmail issues, but um, I have no idea. So I got, got the two financial pieces, which I've printed. I actually had them from Ashley anyway. Yeah. So, um, but I am going to excuse myself and go pick up the stuff from the printing. Great. Okay. Oh, yay.
Hi, James, I just tried to make you co-host to see if that worked. I didn't see any other reason why your video wouldn't turn off and it did work, so great. Thank you. And this is Amy. Hi, I think we might all need to be co-hosts because when I go or um, when I go to start my video, it just says the host has stopped it. Or can you hand over, um, Amy, when we're ready to go, um, we'll have to call the meeting to order. We've got a couple minutes yet, but Brianne could hand the meeting over to you as well. I did just try to fix it. Let me know if you can start your video now. Yep, <laughs> that works. But I will make you a co-host, Amy, just in case you need to share anything on the screen. Great. Hi, everyone. Hey. I am loving this. Almost everyone is here. It's good to see everyone's face. I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth off screen, but I'm right here. Uh -huh, sure. Uh, making, <laughs> yeah, making early dinners for kids going to work, band concerts, you know, all that stuff. All good. Amy, yeah. can you help me? How are you? Good to see you. I, you know, I keep wanting to say Casio. Is it Cosio? It's Casio. Casio. David, yep. I'm, I'm in that, uh, for some reason in my brain, it keeps saying Casio. Oh, yep. I'm, uh, I'm used to all sorts of uh, <laughs> diverse pronunciations. Yeah. So, no worries. Great. Great. Well, we lost, did we lose Stoney? We must have. She must be out and coming back. Oh, chat. There's some chats going on. My video is disabled says James oh here's you are everybody is fixed good deal well we lost Stony um but I am going to go ahead and call this meeting to order um city of Missoula public art committee for Tuesday March 15th um for those who are attending by phone um, cell phone users may call 213-338-8477-253-215-8782-8331-0333. Landline users may call 888-475-4499 or 877-853-5254. And Brianne has it up on the screen on how one can register to join our webinars, the MissoulaPublicMeetings.com. And our agenda will be there. Um, our webinar ID is 853-3133-1330. And the password is 054505. And once again, I'd like to remind any guest um, if they press star nine, raise your hand and we would be recognized for public comment. So that being said, um, we do have a special presentation today, Amy Cozio, but first um, I would like to call as is our tradition for public comment. Um, Amy's on the agenda, so she won't be public comment. <laughs> But Kathy, it does look like we have an attendee named Sam Duncan. Do you want me to promote them to panelists so that they can talk? If Absolutely. Can talk? I would like to. Yes, let's if we could. 
Oh, Sony is here. She's driving home. Um, thank you for, hello, Sam Duncan. Um, Kathy Olson, Chair of the Public Art Committee. We've just called the meeting to order. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, we have just called for public comment. Do you have anything you'd like to say to us? Yeah, I don't know if this is the appropriate moment, but um, I did want to um, tell this committee about a project that the North Side and West Side neighborhoods are seeking funding for and ask for a letter of um, support from this committee. Um, I didn't get my things together to be able to send stuff in advance to you all. So I realized this is the last minute, um, but I'm happy to wait until later if that's best for y'all. Well, um, you know what, Sam, if you could give us a, a maybe a cursory overview now, because it's not on the agenda, we can't make any decisions at this meeting. Um, but what we could do is if you could uh, give us a oh, quick overview, um, then what we could do if, the committee would like is um, I could meet with you along with another committee member and we could have your item put on the agenda for next month to make a decision, but we could also have some information for the committee. So okay. how would that sound? Um, I think that might honestly not, not work for the timeline of this grant application. We had to get started a little bit late and they're due in three days. So um, probably it, it is, just uh, won't work to get an, a formal letter of support, it seems, which is fine. Is it the um, neighborhood grant application? Yeah. Yep. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> yeah, we do. I mean, we, we can't. Um, Mirta, um, help me out here we it really does need to have to be an agenda item for the committee to give support correct um i believe so but i'm looking at the agenda to see if um we have a section for new business as a new business at least in city council if something comes through last minute we can fit it in as a new business um item um we have announcements, news, or upcoming events, but you know what? I think that's a marvelous thing, Brianne. Um, we have not had that on the agenda in the past. I think um, let's add that to future agendas. Um, could it come under announcements, news, and upcoming events? Mirta. Mm. I, <laughs> no. I, don't know. I don't know what the rules are, but I would think that if the committee votes on making it part of the agenda for this meeting so that um, this can move forward within that, you know, very restrictive uh, time frame, um, mm. I think we can make that happen if we take a vote on adding it to the agenda. Okay. Um, we do have a presentation by Amy and, and um, she is part of a timeline. So Sam, about how long will your, do you mind hanging around till after Amy's presentation? No. Okay. Not at all, I'm happy to. Why don't we do that? Um, and again, be, um, you all remember that Sony um, has told us about Amy and her work and we've been talking about um, enhancing our brand and reaffirming our brand um, in essence for the City of Missoula Public Art Committee. So to that end, Sony invited Amy Cosio, who has vast experience in branding and is also an artist, um, to our meeting to talk about um, how what she could do and how she could help us. So um, in order, because of your time frame, Amy, we're going to move you up on the agenda and have you go ahead. Wonderful, thank you. Well, thank you very much for the invitation to be here. Um, and I'm glad that, uh, Sam, that the, there's um, space in the agenda for you to be able to present um, what you're working on too, because uh, that sounds like an awesome project to move forward. So I'll, I'll also be mindful of everyone's time and um, make sure that there's enough space for, um, for us to hear about your project as well. Um, so I thought I'd just start with an overview of what branding is, just so we are um, all on the same page and working with the same nomenclature and understanding, uh, because it can be different things to different people. 
So some people just will think of branding as um, they'll just think of a logo mark, you know, a visual identity. And branding is actually much more comprehensive. It's an integrated identity. And so your logo mark is part of that brand. And so if you think of a brand as an over, like a, an ecosystem or an identity, and that includes um, your visual communication, it also includes uh, your um, how you communicate through your voice. So your written, um, uh, if you, I think about X word, um, external facing channels like your website or social media. So the voice and the tone and the style that you use um, through those channels. It also is um, uh, how you talk, like, like your messaging, your core messaging, how each of you describe um, what this committee is, why it's important, um, why you are compelled to serve on it. Um, and so, the, the whole reason that you have a strong identity is to establish trust and to make a commitment, make a promise. And what that is, is to, um, to fully share, um, and especially with this being a, a public committee, uh, transparency and consistency is, is all the more important so that you're really showing your story and showing who you are, what you do, why it matters. And uh, with this being also a public committee, there are various stakeholders in, in play. So from you know, taxpaying constituents to all the organizations that you interface with, there's a lot of diverse stakeholders. And so having a very strong identity is very important for as I mentioned, establishing trust and then and transparency and also um, helping attract aligned partners to you. And so um, the more clear and consistent um, and comprehensive you can be with your, um, with your identity, with your brand, the more, um, the more you can do because you're starting with a shared understanding um, and clarity of um, what you can, what you are and what you also aren't. And that helps um, uh, really create uh, synergistic alignment and in the space of collaboration, move, move forward all the more um, seamlessly and fluidly and collaboratively. With that quick overview, uh, does anyone have any immediate questions or thoughts they would like to clarify around what a brand is? Okay, and I can say too that Thanks. some of the, and what I mentioned too, the components being, you know, your voice, your logo mark. It's also anything, every, it's not anything, it's everything that you put forward into the world. So, um, uh, you know, with, uh, if, if you have a business card as a committee member, if you have a, um, you know, a poster that's around town saying what the committee is or the projects that you're working on. Um, and, and one thing I wanted to add is that when you are, when an organization is inconsistent, that is the first um, kind of break in trust. Um, so I'm just seeing a chat, so I wanna open that up. Um, Great, okay, I'm just gonna let someone respond to that because I don't know if this impacts um, our timing of the presentation. So does that, um, does that impact our timing of, does that need to happen before? No, no, are, no. Are, 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 keep we're going. good, okay. we're good. Great. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just- No, no worries. Out a general question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries at all. Um, and Greg, it's, it's great to actually see you. I've heard so much about you for years and years and years. So it's great to actually um, see you in a meeting. And um, Likewise. And I was going to say, you, you are, are quite a, a well-known um, authority on branding and visual design and all those things. So it's this like- is, This is the best meeting ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's important. Um, so, so that's a quick overview of what branding is and the components of, of what um, are involved. And um, one of the things that it's also an, um, 
when you have an organization who has, that has different initiatives um, going, it, it provides like a sense of, uh, when I mentioned an ecosystem or an identity, it also can share, um, it's like an extended family. So it can show the, the family of things and the relationship. And so you, you could be an organization, I'm speaking very generally, but that has wildly diverse initiatives. And so someone may interface, and I'm gonna use another example of um, like another um, organization so that you can more easily draw parallels to your own. So there's a, an organization called Western Sustainability Exchange. They're over in Livingston, Montana. They do a lot in the space around regenerative agriculture. They also um, are the uh, organizer of the Livingston Farmers Market. And then they also do workshops and education around food. And they have the, they are, their roots are very diverse. They, um, um, you know, some come to them from if they're a farmer who wants to transition to regenerative ag. Some people are farmers market goers. Some people are um, educators who provide workshops about the importance of soil. So you might come come to this organization from various channels and each of them while related is very diverse and it's this brand that unites them and shows all the ways in which they are connected and that's one of the great ways that you tell your story it's like if you think about a chapter book maybe it has 12 chapters and someone starts in chapter six um, they just pick it up open it up to chapter six what your brand does is moves them beyond just that, that one initiative or that one chapter and introduces them to the other initiatives and the more comprehensive work of the organization. So that's an important thing too, when you think about like the family of things and all the amazing projects that you all work on. Um, it has been really cool to look at your website and I knew about some of them, but there were a lot I didn't know about, which was really cool to see, um, you know, in a city that uh, I think of as, you know, really embracing the arts and supporting them. Uh, it was cool to see there was more depth than, even, than I knew about, which is a great opportunity for you to showcase your story and even, a. Uh, a more comprehensive fashion. Okay, anyone else or anyone need any clarifying things at this point? Okay. So one of the important elements about how you go about branding and establishing a strong brand is the process. And the process is one of discovery and um, really exploring your goals your um, as an organization, um, both short and long-term. And I say long-term with that uh, knowledge that um, we've been in sort of an inside out, upside down world for, for some time now. So it's, it's not, you know, it's not the, the standard like five-year plan. It's, it's not like locked um, into specific uh, timeframes like that, but it's, it's these more overarching things. Like when you think about your mission, why you exist, um, um, all the great things that you do in this community. Um, but it's, it's kind of those, it, it threads both the, the short term and the longer term so that people can, um, can deepen these, these longer standing alliances. And so this discovery process is one where you, um, there are a whole series of questions that are asked and it's, an, it's a way to really think through um, why you do what you do, who does it matter to, what do they need to know, um, what's, how are the best ways to reach them? And so it's, it's pretty cool because the branding what happens is that the identity emerges from these questions. And, and then the, the goal is basically to create a visual mark or representation that sums up 
or encapsulates all of these elements that we've uncovered in this discovery process of your audience, um, of, um, you know, kind of like what gets, um, what gets them excited, um, what gets you excited. And so that's, that's making sure that um, it's a very methodical and um, intentional process of exploring key themes, audiences, um, what you've done in the past, what's worked, what hasn't, um, where what you've accomplished, like your uh, not only your history, but also your legacy and where you are going. And so the, all of that gets explored and um, kind of put in the funnel. And if you think about this being a giant funnel, um, what comes out is the, the, the distillation of it is this logo mark that then encapsulates all of these elements. And then basically what you do is you take that logo mark and then you build that back out again. So it's, um, so it's like the most um, condensed expression of your brand. And then from there, it can expand to collateral, um, website, social media content. Um, you know, if you, someone's on a podcast, basically all kind of expand, expands from there. And so a key part of that discovery process is to look at um, the strengths and weaknesses of the organization. What are some of the opportunities and challenges we may uncover? Um, what does success look like? How do we create a clear roadmap? And, and so if anyone who has done a SWOT analysis, this is a, a great opportunity to kind of pair both um, a key element of strategic planning with your brand discovery. And so the outcome of that process is that you have a clear list of recommended deliverables of um, the elements that would be part of your branding. And then another outcome is that you <clears throat> build out a comprehensive style guide. And I had wanted to put together in advance of this um, meeting a couple of examples. And I had a work thing come up um, unexpectedly, so I was unable to do so. But following this meeting, what I'll do is I will um, send to Stoney so she can disseminate to you all a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. So it'll just really anchor the words with some visuals. Um, so that you don't have to use your powers of imagination to try to figure out what I'm saying. So a style guide is a way to, um, it's how your brand and your identity really comes to life in the world. And this is really helpful because as uh, we spoke about earlier, uh, your brand being your promise to someone and this extension of um, who you are and why you're credible and trustworthy. And the style guide is basically a, um, it's like a set of, of guidelines of how your brand shows up in the world, how to use it. And so why this is really important is that it's all too easy in an organization to, um, and especially one that is, uh, works with um, really dedicated volunteers that's short on time, that has a lot of constraints and capacity issues. But it'll be, you know, someone will say, yeah, I can get um, uh, an event announcement out. Um, yeah, I'll take that one on. Or, or someone, another committee member will be like, oh, yeah, I can put together, um, you know, a PSA for um, an NPR spot and I can write something up. And what happens is that everyone has their own, even if the core is similar, everyone has their own um, way of like riffing on that language. The language changes slightly over time and gets kind of embellished or, I mean, not in, a, in an untrue way, but it's just in uh, infusing it with your own personal um, way of speaking or um, or through design if you know a couple different people are working on different design deliverables um, you know it's it's easy to just um, 
try a little, you know, try a new color or uh, try a tagline pair up with the logo and just being like, oh, let's just see how that looks. And what that does is that every time you change it, 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 it undermines the, the trust and the credibility of that brand because it's showing that you're inconsistently showing up in the world. And what's that subtext is, is, okay, if it's happened, um, and this is a little bit of subconscious psychology here, but it's if um, there are these changes over time, it's like, well, what else is, could be inconsistent? Um, and so it's incredibly important that, um, you know, the, the language is, is consistent over time, whether you're talking to, um, you know, a potential collaborator, or you're talking with, um, on your website, or you're talking in an interview, it's, it's incredibly consistent. So that helps show what you should and should not do in terms of, uh, and, and it's amazing how creative folks can be and be like, let's just throw a drop shadow in there and see what happens. It's like, oh no. <laughs> so it's, a, it's great um, when you have, uh, you know, you have your brand standards and your brand style guide and it's basically a, a recipe book. And it's like, here, here's how this works. Here's how it looks on a, on a business card. Here's how it looks on an event poster. And it's super helpful. So yeah, so in, again, talking just about process. So we, we talked a little bit about um, discovery and then identifying the elements that go into uh, uh, what will become the kind of key pillars and art, um, architecture of your brand. And then you go into the research part and that's where you really look at um, uh, elements of your, who else is in your, it's not really a competitive set, but like your environment and looking at who you, um, who, what other organizations and identities are in your ecosystem, because you do, it's important to differentiate between them. And that's part of it is, is, um, you know, there oftentimes there is confusion among what entity does what. And so that's a key part of your brand is to really um, communicate uh, clearly what it is that makes you unique and different and be super clear in that communication. So that all happens through the research part of looking at the ecosystem and other related um, organizations. And then you just really start working on some key messaging and how you talk about the organization. And then that's when you then move into the, um, the visual exploration and looking at um, logo development. So you can see there's quite a lot of um, foundational research and discovery and information architecture that happens before you even start thinking about design. Um, and that's all uh, really important for your organization so that everything that you do is, is based on that that foundation of the entity that you are, um, and that uh, the um, what you communicate externally to the world is done so after very strong um, a very strong internal process. And then you typically go through um, you know starting with that logo mark as the clear distillation point, um, you typically go through a couple of presentations with some options and then um, winnowing those down, refining those, um, and then coming to uh, one clear mark that communicates um, who you are, what you do, and why that matters. And from there, once that is finalized, that's when you start building it back out again through the uh, comprehensive style guide. So as I mentioned, I'll provide a couple of visual examples of these, which will really help. Um, and again, I wish I could have done that beforehand. Um, so we had a little bit of um, prep work coming into, coming into this, but um, yeah, a couple of unexpected things happened today. So. 
that's in, in a condensed version, an overview of what branding is, why it matters, um, the process of how you go through it, and some of the deliverables and outcomes that you are left with. And I can talk about, I mean, I can talk about this all day, but I've been trying to like, how can I talk about this in like 15 minutes, 20 minutes? <laughs> so. um, thanks, Amy. I mean, um, as somebody who's dealt with all of this in my life as well, I, I think your presentation was wonderful um, in helping us. Um, you know, right now, one of the reasons the committee has been so interested in exploring and reiterating and, and dealing with this whole branding issue is um, we do have new people. Um, we have there, we have a future that, um, I mean, one never knows what's going to be happening in your future. Um, yes, we're an official city committee. Yes, we are recognized. Um, but with new committee members, there's, um, you know, there's amazing doors that can be opened for us as a committee. So I, I personally look at this too as an opportunity for us to look from whence we came and explore where we are and explore where the future is, but also um, a learning experience for all of the members of the committee, many of whom are um, somewhat new. So um, I, I, it, I think it would be a great learning experience for everyone. Yes, because it really is important to integrate uh, the history of what all has happened, you know, an exploration of what is the present, where you are now, and then that, um, that visioning of, uh, of potential and where it is that you'd like to go in the future and ensure that your, your brand identity communicates all that very clearly. So perhaps um, I think you've given us some examples. The committee, um, I think what would be beneficial for all of us is to perhaps receive a proposal. Um, I think Stoney's talked to you about that. Um, and with the time frame allocated and costs and all of those kind of things. Um, and then we, we can see how something can happen for the future. You bet. And Does anyone? Advance, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was say, in advance of that proposal, what I'll do is um, uh, share some examples to that illustrated different components of this. So mm -hmm. um, it mm -hmm. creates more of a shared understanding. Yeah. No, I think that would be great. What does everyone else think? On one hand, I, I guess, you know, we've, we've had our annual meetings. I think this um, could almost be. I don't want to call it an annual meeting, but an extension of that annual meeting um, in where we have thought about our goals. And um, I mean, we had a mission statement as the public art committee. Does that, is that theoretically, it should still work for us, um, but just recognizing some of these things again, um, I think it would be exciting to hear everyone's opinions and, and thoughts um, about where, where we are in this whole process and where we can go. Seems like a good time for a refresh for us and some mm -hmm. down um, what that branding position looks like for us. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Amy. Mm -hmm. um, really clear and precise. Um, path of understanding to how to, how to identify uh, an establishment or a group like us. Um, looking forward to, yeah, a proposal and um, seeing where we can move from there for sure. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Oh, you bet. And as I said, this is a, a really uh, expansive topic. So it's one that I, I love talking about and um, in some ways it was, you know, it was, um, there's just a lot more to talk about. So uh, it's a really cool, it's one of my favorite processes is, is actually branding or rebranding because it's so intentional and you're mm -hmm. so, um, 
you're so deliberate in the um, in the questions that you ask and the thinking that that goes into them and you know and within um, organizations of of members you know really kind of fleshing things out um, and you know parsing the the nuance of of um, of words and what they mean and it's just such a cool. Um, creative process and what's what's neat about it too is that the the process is very similar there's like very key steps um and so you can follow this it's not necessarily a formula but it's a it's a recipe uh -huh. and what comes out of it though is is where there is just awesome alchemy and so it's so neat that you've got this this tried and true process of discovery and research and design and refinement and um and then the what the magic happens in that process. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. cool. Um, Amy, thanks. I just want to jump on real quick. Hi, I, I was caught in some like weird, um, I don't know, nether worlds of Zoom. So I anyway, um, excuse my tardiness and thank you so much for sharing. And I I, I really appreciated the. Um, you helping us to think about logo too. Um, I think it's so common to be like, well, somebody had draft us up something for 30 bucks. I bet we could find something that uh -huh. looks kind of cool. Um, and I, I love that thought of like that being kind of like, I don't know, like the belly button of everything else. Um, so yeah, thanks for, I, I don't think you use that word, but um, I, I appreciated how everything kind of grew from that space. Um, so thanks for sharing your expertise and your time with us. We super appreciate it. Oh, you bet. Well, thanks for all of your work that you all do on, um, making Missoula all the more awesome. And, you know, now that I have a deeper understanding of what you all do, um, and help facilitate and create, um, I, I'm just all the more appreciative. Thanks, Amy. We will definitely be in touch. That sounds great. Okay, appreciate okay. it. Take care. Cool. Um, yay. Well, so now before we um, give Sam the floor for a public comment, what I'd like to do is have um, everyone did receive a copy of the minutes and thanks, Greg. I didn't um, didn't want to ignore that. I, I just had heard that Amy needed to go first. So I forewent the approval of the minutes, but um, has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes? Um, if so, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the February meeting. And we don't want to all speak at once. <laughs> motion to approve. So I was Thanks. not, I was absent. Oh, oh, you can't. Yeah, you were absent. You cannot approve. Well, since that happened to me last Perfect. time, I'll do it this time. I, oh. I moved to. <laughs> Perfect. I'll, I'll second Greg's motion. <laughs> Perfect. It's been moved and seconded for the minutes approval. Do we have any additional discussion? Hearing none, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Raise your Aye. hand. Because again, you know, we aren't being very vocal and I know I'm going to pull teeth to get people to talk. Um, so, any opposed? Perfect. Um, now let's go back to public comment. Sam, are you there? Um, Kathy, I um, can I just uh, I never know if if you're seeing my virtual hand or if I should. No. Oh, well, now I am. So. Um, just I checked with Marty really quick about procedure for this. And um, because it has to be publicly noticed, we uh -huh. can't take action. So we That's can't just right. add it to the agenda. However, we can hear it. And we can either call a special meeting where we vote. Um, you only need, I think, two days for public notice um, or whatever's on, in our bylaws uh, in terms of requirement for public notice, or any of us individually can um, provide a letter of support. Uh, so not as a committee, but Maybe. individuals. Mm -hmm. Right. into this committee can provide a letter of support. And if we all discuss it and we provide verbal support 
in the minutes, I think that can be attached to the packet that Sam would have to provide the Office of Neighborhoods as a proof, if you will, that we talked about it and there's a sense of support. So I just wanted you to know that we can Thanks. vote on it, but we can call a special meeting or individually provide support. Thanks for that clarification. I knew if it wasn't on the agenda, we weren't would not be able to vote. And I thank you so much for um, clarifying that. One of the other things I'd like to throw out too is if the um, if Sam is awarded and if the neighborhood's awarded that funding, um, you could also come back and talk to us um, because we'd have an idea of it be on the agenda, and then perhaps figure out a way at a later time how the committee could be involved. Yeah, that sounds great. So take it away, Sam. Cool. I didn't really come prepared to do a formal presentation, but I will do oh, my yeah, best. Yeah, a quick overview is good. So cool. Um, so yeah, my name is Sam Duncan. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm a community organizer with North Missoula Community Development Corporation. I'm also a Northside resident and I organize um, with neighbors here in the neighborhood. And so um, NMCDC and Northside Westside Crew and our um, neighborhood council leadership team are all kind of working together to pull together a very last minute um, neighborhood improvement grants application. And yeah, we're hoping to bring public art um, and placemaking to our neighborhood um, with two, two kind of main projects that I can just describe to you. Um, and I can also, I forwarded um, the project summary to a few folks on this committee and maybe they can share it around um, as well if you wanna look at it later. Um, but basically our, our first piece of our project is doing a, I'm gonna share my screen. Host disabled participant screen sharing. Is there a chance that I could share my screen maybe? Brianne, can Sam share her screen? Tear screen. You should be able to Okay, now. I think I got it, cool. Okay, so this is just kind of our summary of our first piece, which is to do, um, here's some examples, uh, surface like street murals. And we're hoping to do one, um, hopefully one of more in the future, um, next to Lowell School in the west side. And so we're hoping for the intersection of Sherwood Street and Hawthorne, which is on the south side of Lowell School and West Side Park. Um, Principal Frank at Lowell School is super excited about this. And it's kind of, I think, a next step for our neighborhood, um, for the west side in particular, cementing West Side Park and Lowell School as really the heart of our neighborhood. Um, so we're really excited about this and today got a commitment from uh, Stella Nall, um, who's a really amazing local artist who designed this uh, mural for us and with us. Um, and so Stella is going to be designing this and we're working with, um, we've been talking to Ben Weiss and Deborah Postma and folks at the city about this. Um, and then the community and neighbors and kids will actually come together to paint the mural. Um, and like a paint by numbers style. So we're super excited about this. And we've got the um, wisdom of uh, city repair, the city repair project out of Portland, Oregon to kind of guide how we do this. They've done about 70 of these um, in Portland and, and other places. So they've got really good guides on what materials to use so that it's not you know, destroyed by the snowplow um, and how to make these things last. So super excited about this. Um, and then our second, project just real briefly is that we are hoping to um, beautify uh, three quick build traffic circles that are um, coming to the north side neighborhood this summer. And this is something that's been done before in the Lewis and Clark neighborhoods and most recently in Franklin to Fort. Um, so here's just two photos to kind of jog your memory or let you know this is a cool thing that happened. Um, and so our plan is to, um, for three quick build traffic circles, once they decide the location, um, put big planters with native plants in the center and then engage three other artists, um, each of them to design and envision like art that will essentially be in a stripe around the planter in each one of these traffic circles. Um, yeah. And to, to kind of make this happen, we're hoping to bring together a bunch of um, community partners to use this as an opportunity to build collaborative relationships. Um, so hopefully you will ultimately be one of those partners, even if you know we can't formally do anything about it right now. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be working with Lowell School. Um, All Nations Health Center is also excited to work with us on this project. 
um, because we are hoping to leverage public funds to engage indigenous artists um, to make sure that indigenous art is front and center in our neighborhood. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. And there's more info in that in that thing that someone can share or I can share with you later. Um, if Brianne could get that, whatever that printed information is, if whoever received it could send it to Brianne so she could send it to the whole committee, that'd be lovely. Um, Sam, that's, it, you know, it, it's, that's actually an exciting project. You know, we've been working and James can speak to this because he is the chair of our subcommittee and working with Ben in an effort to do exactly what you all are doing on the north side with your traffic circles. So um, it's exciting. And, you know, we have worked with Stella as an artist. She is amazing, um, extremely talented, and so understands this public art process. Um, so you're, you're very lucky to have chosen her and for her to be working with you. Yeah, I mean, I think we're lucky to very that she is willing very to work with us. <laughs> all of those things, because she will do yeah. a great job. And also, shout out to Danny Vasquez, who's I know on this committee, who I think um, might be wanting to design one of our traffic circles mm -hmm. um, and be involved in this project too. Just to name that. Also excited about that. I also have the paper, and I will send that. Oh, Just thanks, send Danny. A thing. <laughs> I just sent it um, to Brianne too. So if you have, okay. Great. I just wanna say that as um, we're representative um, for this, for part of this area for the West side and having been a neighbor to Lowell School, this is incredibly exciting. Um, Lowell School has the reputation of being the neighborhood magnet, if you will. And I think this will, literally cement that in a way and uh, mm -hmm. the community together. And it's just um, in line with so many of the goals of, of the neighborhood and what's projected for the community center there. So um, fully supportive of this. And also we all know that traffic calming um, is even better when it's um, collaborated on by a group of neighbors they take ownership of it um, and art in in that form is um, just a great thing to add to the to the transportation benefits of having a traffic calming um, device so um, fully supportive of that too and Sam I don't know if you know but there there are a couple of uh, meetings taking place tomorrow uh, regarding um, Traffic circles, I believe it's coming out of the uh, transportation and mobility uh, mm -hmm. department. So I can forward that information to you, but it might be a good place to talk about this too and get further support from the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you. James, do you want to throw in some comments? <laughs> I haven't looked at the information sent forward, but it all looked really good. And I'm very pleased with the community engagement with the program and where it started and how it's sort of been duplicated, multiplied, and and just created its own in so many different forms. I would, um, my particular interest right now with uh, currently engaging artists and creating calls for art is the artist stipend. And I'm not sure if, if the North side group has covered um, that portion of the grant proposal or reached that stage of the creation of the stipend, but I'd be, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, I think that's, that's honestly probably our, our priority and was where this idea came from was like this money's here how do we make a competitive application so we can use it to pay artists um, was why we decided to do an application. Um, so we're doing our best right now to tailor our budget to pay as much as we can, given that's going to be, it's not going to be um, a stipend that would be what we want it to be, given there's a cap on the grants, we need to pay for supplies, et cetera. Um, so currently we, we actually are reducing the number of quick build um, traffic circles that we're going to be working on in order to have more money for our stipend. Um, 
I'm not the budget person, but last time I looked, we had budgeted $750 for the like large for the design of the large piece, knowing that community members are going to be doing the bulk of the actual painting. Um, and then I think $500 a piece for the three um, quick build traffic circle pieces. I'm hoping that we can um, increase that a little bit in our application. And also particularly with the, the huge intersection, it's such, if you do the math, you know, $30, $40 per square foot, we're not, we're not, we're not within thousands <laughs> of, of where that fee should be. So my goal is just between, you know, if we are accepted and when we actually paint, hopefully find some community partners who'd be willing to leverage addition, additional funds to help pay for um, our artists' skill and time and participation. So hopefully we can pull that together. And I feel confident with the amount of community partners we have involved that somebody will hopefully step forward and help us out with that. Um, Sam, if, if you wanted, I've written a uh, number of neighborhood proposals which have all been funded. So if you all would like a little help before the end, I'm willing to throw in my volunteer hat, not as a public art committee member, but just as somebody who's written a number of them, if y'all want, so. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you very much. I'll, and, there's and, like you know, five of us, <laughs> but I'll send yeah. it along when we have a draft. The proposal has become, um, in the last couple of years, a little more cumbersome. <laughs> so. Yep. Well, <laughs> well, thank you. Anyone else have any comments? Um, keep us posted, Sam, because truly it's something that um, working with Ben and James working as um, our committee chair on this whole idea, um, I, I think it's something that I can see the committee maybe wanting to explore further in the future with y'all. That would be awesome. Thanks so much for making time. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Sam. Um, great. Oh, I, I love this. James, we've, we've got some more work cut out for you. <laughs> um, so the next, I pan around. Um, next thing, um, Brienne emailed everybody um, the most recent copy of our my financial situation. Um, essentially, it has not changed um, on the paper because we have, um, as of the end of February, we had not um, had any increased money into the budget. Um, you will see um, additional monies that have come in um, when we receive our March um, total. And I'm going to let Stoney talk about that. But essentially, why, you know, all of the money that we have received that you will see on the expenditure portion was received prior to this fiscal year. So again, the city operates on a fiscal year from July 1st to June 30th. And the monies that we received prior to July 1st of 2021 um, are in the budget for that date. And in essence, um, $4,500 of that budget is actually allocated to the traffic signal box program. We carried those over to this year. Um, you may also see monies when we get an updated budget next month for, um, and again, I'll let Stoney talk about that, but money's received specifically for PAC Live. So, but you will, um, Brianne will attach this to our minutes and our agenda every month. Um, does has anyone, everybody had a chance to look at that? Does anyone have any questions? It's been pretty status quo. Um, the other thing as far as the budget, and Mirta, maybe I can you can address this. Mirta has talked to Lee Griffin about those projects um, and balancing monies which should have come to the public art committee um, for community city projects, but haven't quite made it yet. So Mirta is working on that. Yeah, I I just had a couple of questions, basic questions for Lee about how the budget um, essentially when the projects and the percent for our uh, percent and a half make it to our balance sheets and why some projects are not showing and um, 
So I asked that she, if she could do a reconciliation of projects with um, the funding that we have right now. And um, I have to follow up with her to see what she has found. And if we didn't receive those funds, I wanna know why, because um, it should have, and maybe it's something in the way, how it's described that might not fit our description of, of um, <laughs> What, what qualifies under um, uh, per percent for art. So I just wanna learn a little bit more. And um, as soon as I hear from her, I'll, I'll be sending all of that to you. Um, and I think this is important to know because as we continue to grow and the city continues to either purchase um, buildings or land um, and engage in projects, public projects, I think it's important that we have a really straight path from that to um, the budget for this committee. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and again, I keep saying this, I think um, some of the people have been new and the understanding and the transfer, actual transfer of the funds um, because of their newness and understanding of the ordinance that it does, it is, it covers new and remodel construction that, you know, so um, it's, it's good that um, Lee Griffin is doing an, another analysis and a look at all of that. Um, and, you know, and this is something that we've had on the agenda, but just to throw it out, there are, I mean, there are some amazing opportunities for us coming up um, with potential opportunities, depending on um, where and how the city pursues them. I mean, we all know that the city and the county are looking at to purchase the federal building and there will be remodel costs there. Um, things associated with the water company, with the city of Missoula Water. Um, there's new park, um, improvements planned. So while we don't have hard and fast numbers on those at this point in time, there will be numbers um, estimated and as close to hard and fast as you can. Some of them, you know, some of you may have seen in the Missoulian too, the potential for a community center um, next to currents. And there would be, it appears there would be a bond issue or I'm, well, help me on that one, Mayor. May or may not be, but whatever. If the city funds are expended on that, um, it could be another amazing project. A couple few years down the road, but again, it's laying the groundwork for possible future projects. So same with the former library site. Um, if if it doesn't mm -hmm. get um, well, if it gets uh, remodeled or there's some funding there too. Yeah. So, and, and this includes redevelopment monies. So we just, um, it, it's good we're getting a, um, an improved handle on everything, shall we say. So um, I'm going to move on to, I have um, artwork maintenance on the project. We had, you know, in the past we'd have um, the traffic circle, Lillian's painting um, as well. Um, as any other things. And, and I put maintenance on there because I was thinking that it might be better to have a general category for projects that we need to have some work done on, um, which would include the rattlesnake, um, the Lillian's painting on the sound, not on the sound wall, but the um, traffic circle wall there at Van Buren. Um, I have been, um, working with the lower, with the Rattlesnake Neighborhoods Association, um, some folks there, as well as a couple, um, they suggested some other organizations that could help Lillian um, with a, another cleaning of the sound wall. Um, nothing is, oh, is Stoney? Well, it's kind of curious. I, I don't know. I, I drove by it the other day and I was like, oh, it looks better. I don't know if we've just had enough rain I, I don't know. Well, it did get pretty well cleaned the last time. Okay, it's, so, it's it looks better than it did at least. And yeah. I, I didn't notice it until the other day and thought, oh, it's, it's actually quite, it's more vibrant than it was. It is much more vibrant. Um, there is still some, you know, that wall as you, if you walked by it, um, Lillian did an amazing job on filling in the surface because it is that, um, kind of ferro cement, sand cement, and it was pretty darn rough. 
but she did an amazing job. Um, she and her husband scrubbed. I helped them scrub. And, you know, they did a good job, but she wanted to come back and do another cleaning this spring and summer. And so that's where we're trying to um, get the neighborhood groups involved. Is so, there a protective coat on that? Excuse me. Pardon? Is there a protective coat? On oh, that? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. Yep. Yeah, and um, you know, anytime we've done a, the murals, um, just for your all's knowledge, there's always um, there's always a, and I don't want to call it a graffiti guard, but there's protective coating on top of it to protect the artwork. So um, most people have used golden paints because of its their mural paints, their outdoor because of the durability with not only um, the base paint but a stabilization coat as well as a clear coat. Um, multiple clear coat covering. So, um, and then the other thing, and I did have Brianne email you, I don't expect a vote on this at all at this meeting, but I did want you all to know that Mike Golans, who um, did the piece at the, um, shoot, the, the um, not Central Park, the other parking structure on, um, West East Front, um, his piece, um, you know, he went by and he's, he's noticed that um, Go With The Flow has, has needed some work. So he did send us a proposal for repairs. Um, what I'd like to do is, um, you know, there, there's some for the actual wheel that needs to be done, some um, artist time, as well as some repair of the paint chips. But what I was hoping is that, um, is we could get a subcommittee. <laughs> You're probably gonna hate it, but just a couple people to work on um, issue of maintenance of some of our pieces and to work with me on um, looking at these proposals and then bringing them to the committee. So um, Mike's piece, obviously it, um, he has estimated roughly 4,500 for the repairs that he sees necessary. Um, I you know, the, we, I did work with Sherwood on the paint last time and they um, did a sizable donation. So there, there are things like that, that I was hoping that there might be a couple of people who would work with me on this and maintenance and um, talk about some possibilities and work with me to bring it to the committee. And then um, come back next month and, you know, based on Money that are there, what we really see that we can do, either short term, mid term, or long term on this on this project. So, anyone want to volunteer to be on a subcommittee, <laughs> maintenance subcommittee, please? I'm happy to join, Kathy. Oh, thanks, James. <laughs> it's really, it's you know, it's not a lot, but I think um, it would be great to have a, at least one other person working. How much of this will we will be starting to do between now and, and the end of April? Um, I don't, you know, I don't think any of this work would take place until this summer. If we, I mean, again, what we need to do is um, look at our monies, look at what we can afford, and also um, look to see if there's any possible way to get some of this work donated. Um, I will say, you know, for example, in the past, Todd Peterson's um, crossings on the north end of Higgins, the um, red X's, if you will, um, we got $35,000 worth of labor, et cetera, et cetera, donated for that. Um, you know, if, if Mike's piece had been cut powder coated, I could have had that donated in a heartbeat, but instead we used the same, he used the same type of paint that's on the um, stanchions for the tent down in Karis Park. So a little different thing, but, you know, some of it, again, could be donated. Some of it, um, you know, we might be able to get um, additional funds donated. So anyone work with James and me on that? I, I could do that. Um, it's just that I'm a little jammed up until the end of April. Okay. Well, I think that's fine. Um, let's, let's, the three of us, I mean, and I don't think it's going to take a lot of time, Deborah. I think it's... Um, looking at this um, and then bringing back a plan to the committee so we could actually vote on how we can do it. Perfect. So we have a subcommittee for maintenance. 
<laughs> um, I'm going down that, 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 that street projects, James, anything that you want to update us on there? Well, I um, kind of just a follow up from the presentation that we just had earlier. Um, it seems that Ben and Allie's work to create a neighborhood guide frame, a guide work type plan for citizens to use is coming along and they're gonna have that finished up pretty soon. So there will be multiple kind of engagement opportunities for different neighborhoods around the city, utilizing the opportunity just like the North Side group is. Um, I, I'm also applying a neighborhood grant for the Lewis and Clark neighborhood. Um, hoping to receive a little bit of money for some projects that could take place down there, uh, particularly uh, dedicated towards uh, creating the stipend for that street level art and concentrating it inside the circle and eliminating all any kind of um, option of putting a physical uh, barrier such as a planner or something else and just having it purely open at art. Um, mm -hmm. So so, Kathy, I'll probably be reaching out to you really soon about that. And um, there's not many updates outside of that, but we're coming into um, building and painting season. So I'm excited to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Cool. Ha always happy to help. So perfect. Um, Dash, Dennis, any word from Michael? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't heard anything from him. The, the last time I heard from him was right before our last meeting. And he sent me a couple things on my cell phone, a couple texts uh -huh. and uh, a couple images. And I emailed him back and asked him if he could send some images uh, back so that, so that we could uh, email them to all the committee members. And I have not heard back from him. And uh, I was going to call him back today, and I didn't get a chance to. But um, I'll uh, I'll keep trying and uh, and see see what happens. It's should be should be coming along pretty pretty good, I would imagine. I mean, fairly soon. I mean, we should be able to to get the sculpture installed in the library. So. If you could, um, yeah, get, give him another call. Um, Hanor, who is, uh, you all know this, the director of the library is retiring at the end of the month. And um, it's appropriate that we give them an update on exact what's going on in time frame and all that. And, and she, I, she, I know, would like that. So if you could give Mike a call and. Get, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll try him again. You, yeah, and, and use, uh, um, tell him Hanor is retiring and we need some answers quickly <laughs> okay with the pressure on him yeah put the pressure on yeah yeah thanks okay thanks dennis miss stoney pack live you're up um okay let's see so um yeah things are hopefully happening things are happening um, we received our first donation. Um, I don't know. Uh, is it an anonymous donor? <laughs> no, uh -huh. Thanks, Kathy, we received our first donation, um, which actually really covers our first month of expenses. So I think we can really move forward with Pack Live. Thank you, Kathy, for your generosity. Um, and Greg and I met last week also to discuss um, some fundraising efforts. And I think we have a plan in place. And so we're going to be reaching out to folks. And Kathy also had some great ideas about people to reach out to. So we will go forth, divide and conquer, and hopefully um, fund some uh, time-based, ephemeral, performative um, takeovers of um, downtown Missoula. It really, we, get, we don't have the funds to, to, to finance full takeovers, but it, it's something we can work towards, many takeovers. Um, we, I, I'll be sending, um, we'll, we'll need to get our call really up and rolling. And so over the course of this month, I think um, we can have that live and, and probably have it due towards the end of, well, it's kind of coming up here. So 
maybe middle of next month, middle to end of next month, um, something like that, um, in order for our first, I can't believe how fast everything's going, what happened to this year. Um, yeah, anybody have questions? I don't know, what, what would you like me to talk about? I'm just kind of trying to move so, things. Um, so technically our art call needs to be approved by the committee. <laughs> so, okay. if, so if, even if you have the rough dra the draft without dates, we so could approve that. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. I, I mean, we went over the kind of line items last um, last session. Let me pull that up again. Here, I can get it real quick. What would you like to see? A link to it? I probably should have sent it along earlier. I guess. Um. Do you do you have it pushed out in like date time things do? Because if you're not going to put it out into we can vote on it next at the next meeting next month. No, we can't. We can't wait though. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Joel. We just, we don't want, but I don't think. I mean, if we can, if we can move this forward now, uh -huh. I would rather not. Okay. Um, let me just uh, share with you what I have. Yeah, I mean, I have the overview sheet and our call here. So um, let me just drop this in the chat for you. Okay. And then let me give you the um, other piece that had kind of the timeline um, involved in it. Let's see. Here's the other one. Sorry. I don't know. If you can't, Tony, we could call a special meeting to vote on. Kathy, I drop both of them in the chat. They should both be there. Okay. Can Brianne? Can you pull them up? A while ago. It says it came in at five. One of them says access denied. The second one. All panelists. Entities. There's two Google Doc links. Okay, let me just change the permissions on it. Oh, Google. Stoney, can you share your screen if you have so, the pull up? Are you able to get access to the first one? Yeah. I yeah, hang on just a second. Um, and I, um, oops, I have, and I have shared, yeah, I just shared both of these kind of as via screen share with you guys. Um, oh, let me see. Got to share. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. Can you, yeah. Okay, great. Yep. Um, so this was the oh timeline and budget that we had talked about earlier. Does this look familiar? Um, we have uh, April 22. So actually we're running, well, we can get our call. I mean, if we approve this, then we can get our call out in March, which is now selection, we'll make selections. So we don't have the actual like here, let's meet on Friday at two o'clock um, set up yet. Uh, but just kind of the general calendar draft with um, a, a first to go in May um, through September with a budget of 600 per session. Um, I Some of the budget items that we actually set aside <clears throat> was an intern position, um, which I would actually 
revise um, because of the, we don't, I don't think we really have the bandwidth to oversee an intern. Um, and then I also penciled $500 in for like Christmas carols or Christmas projecting or something fun for the holidays. And it's so dark that time of year that some cool light things could happen. Mm -hmm. Is this kind of what you were looking for? There's also uh, the other piece I have is this, uh, and this is what we talked about last time, um, which was kind of the language that could be used for um, inside the call. Good. Yeah, it just we we to um, everyone needs to be aware, and we need to approve essentially Great. everything. So, if um, I would entertain a motion for Stony to disseminate the art call. Um, given that the money is in hand for the appropriate um, PAC Live um, performances, pardon me. So do I hear a motion? I move. Great. Um, it's been moved and seconded that the art call in the program, it can be, it hasn't been seconded, sorry. <laughs> that the art call has been approved and the program has been approved given that the money is available for the appropriate programs. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thanks, James. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Do we hear any more discussion? All in favor, uh, raise your hands, please. And yeah. Opposed? Good. Okay, Stoney. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's wonderful. My apologies for not delivering that in an easier way for you guys. Thank you for your patience. Perfect. Um, traffic signal boxes. Um, we have, um, it's still, we have three definite and possibly four. I still have not heard on the final funding for Russell and Broadway. Um, but otherwise the, everything will be the same as in previous years and you will have an um, art call in hand to approve in April. Um, and we'll essentially be following um, it, the team, the team, the same time frame. <laughs> so, um, and that's that's it for TSBs because I know um, we have things to talk about. Indigenous mural project. Danny, anything new? Is Danny here? No. Yeah, I'm here. Um, and nothing on my end. Um, okay. Yeah, I need to um look into that um i yeah i just these couple of months were just kind of no busy so now i'm like i can focus on things now like mm -hmm. art things so um yeah uh hoping like ne by next month i'll have um like an update i'll try and figure out what's going on with that so yeah and if you want help Danny talking um, either with Linda at the Downtown Association or Parks and Recreation, let me know and I'll, I'll take tag team with you if you want. Yeah, I mean, um, get in the way. if you want to like um, connect us in an email, that would be that would be really helpful. I don't think I have her email. Okay, cool. Thank you. You bet. Um, and one, we have two more things, the Rattlesnake Neighborhood Project, um, but also um, process and procedures. And um, that was up after budget because, but I knew we had these other things to talk about. So I moved it down on the list. Um, there's nothing new on the sound wall or on any artwork on the sound wall. Although um, Beth Judy um, did email me and they have the rattlesnake lower neighborhood area has not given up on something for that. So um, nothing new definitive. But I know they um, they still want to explore something um, for that north exposure of the sound wall along I-90. So, um, and the next thing, process and procedures, I hope you all had a chance to look at it. Um, Brianna worked very hard on kind of worksheets. And this comes just back from, again, we have new committees, new committee chairs. Um, what we, what, what we wanna do for the people that come after us is if they're going to do the same projects or any projects, have some outline of the who, what, when, where, why, and how. So um, I don't, ex I, I, did y'all have a chance to look at these um, feedback? 
Um, we're talking these pieces of paper. <laughs> um, if, if you all could do that by the next meeting, um, try one of your projects, Dennis, maybe you can put information in there about this collaboration with the library. Stoney, maybe you could put something in on um, Pack Live, put something together and see if it fits um, so that we have an established process and things on, on how that project can continue to move forward or other projects. And, and James, if you wouldn't mind doing it with streets, that'd be great. Cool. Um, and if it, you know, if you see an area that is missing, because these truly are works in progress, um, write it in and, and we can make that change because, um, you know, you try to think of everything um, and we followed along with some of the previous um, projects that we've had that are outlined with process and procedure, but um, we might have missed something that would be specific to your project. Woohoo! Wow. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> um, Bree, do you have anything to say about the process and procedure worksheets? Rianne? Sorry, I was um, struggling to unmute. Um, oh. <laughs> no, I don't think that. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think that I have anything to say. I don't think I have anything to add. Perfect. Um, so um, now we're on to announcements, news, or upcoming events. Um, anybody have anything, anything in the art world or idea generation? Anyone have any ideas, project ideas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll, I'll just say if once we do get the um, call for PAC Live listed, um, if you would be so kind to share that around with folks you know who are dancers, musicians, sound artists, uh, uh, multimedia, sensory folks, performance artists, community engaged practice artists, et cetera. Um, that would be awesome. Thanks. So Stoney too, as soon as you get that, if you could send it the final version to Brianne, we can get it to Heidi because we do have, you know, one of the things we can't forget is we have a list of over 500 artists, not all are from Missoula, but um, we have their emails. And we don't know names, et cetera, et cetera, because of the city's privacy policy. But we have a pretty good darn list of artists that if we, Brianne can get that to Heidi, Heidi will get it to the tech folks at the city and it'll be disseminated to all of those people as well. Great, thank you. Thanks for that prompt. Yep. Um, cool. So does anyone have anything else to say? <laughs> In, and I guess I should have asked this up in like the maintenance part, but um, are y'all planning to, um, uh, I don't know the right verb, <laughs> um, I guess fix the, um, the traffic signal box on Broadway in Madison? It was Monica's um, artwork. Um, we cannot fix it. The highway department fixes it. Where well, there's actually that one and also the fifth and orange one. However, what we um, do want to do in um, neighborhood as well is once they replace it, it, it appears that the neighborhood would like the same box back. Okay. Um, you know, the same thing happened and this is, uh, you know, it must be that box. I have no idea because um, I don't know if any of you remember the previous box. It was um, a Blackfoot artist and it was called Part Flesh and it was lovely. And I, honestly, like months after she painted it, um, one of the delivery trucks backed into it. And because it didn't damage the guts, if you will, of the signal box, the highway department did not change it out. So, and that's essentially the same thing with the signal box that Monica did, as well as the signal box on sixth and orange. Sorry, I said fifth and orange, but sixth and orange. Um, so it's unfortunate, but um, and they change them out when they have the funding. And again, if the guts aren't damaged, they prolong the box in its current location. 
Um, I did mention that to her that we did want to redo it and uh, how disappointed we were that it was hit. But um, I don't know if she remembers, but we, uh, unfortunately, we don't have any control over the boxes being switched out. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, if you talk to her, we're, I mean, it's, she won't be forgotten. Okay. So. Has that, has that box already been replaced? No. But no. it hasn't? Uh-uh. Okay. No, it's, it's, you know, in, in the dent is there and it's obnoxious, but the guts, it's, it's not been replaced. So. And the same with, I remember with Parflesh, it was there for a couple of years years afterwards. Shouldn't the driver have been a little bit responsible for the damage? Well, if we had known if they knew who it was, I actually went in and talked to the people at the Sinclair station to see if they had any video. And of course they didn't um, after it happened. Um, but yeah, it was, a, I mean, it's been essentially a hit and run. When, you know, and the same with Six and Orange, we, in all of our history, we've had one situation where the an insurance company was held liable and they did pay for the replacement of a traffic signal box for the artwork. So we did receive that money. Um, but in these the other three cases, we just don't know who did it. Of course. So, well, that being said, um, if anyone has nothing else to say, I will adjourn the meeting. Um, I really appreciate Appreciate everyone's attention. Um, Stoney, thank you again for having Amy present to us. And um, I'm happy to. Uh, do we want to make sure on our agenda for next time, do we want to have a follow up conversation about um, uh, what, what Amy shared with us? Yes. Yeah, I think we'll leave. I mean, I was planning on leaving branding on the agenda. So we, we could have that. Did I miss anything, anybody? I don't think I did. So that being said, um, I will adjourn the meeting. So thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks for the exchange. I really appreciate it.